Welcome to East of Eden Readings. I'm your Consciousness Coordinator, Reverend Rock, a.k.a. Raheem. And tonight we're going to discuss the title, Born in Bethlehem. Uncut. This is an introduction to the astrological sign Virgo and its place in the King James Bible. And I'm going to read a verse from the chapter Isaiah 7th, excuse me, from the book of Isaiah, the 7th chapter and 14th verse in your King James Bible. And I quote, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. The virgin, obviously, is the constellation Virgo, whom holds the sheaves of wheat. If you look at any picture or depiction of the Virgo, is either an angel or a maiden holding some wheat. And she, in ancient times, in esoteric times, in esoteric teachings, is considered the house of bread. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which literally means in Hebrew, the house of bread. Because the virgin holds the sheaves of wheat, who is the mac, who excuse me, which is the active ingredient in creating bread. Bread is the symbol of the body. Remember, I told you that in previous in my previous videos. Bread is the symbol of the body, this physical vessel that our immortal souls are in. It's the vehicle. All right, I'm going to go on. To another verse. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod. Bethlehem again literally means in Hebrew the house of bread. The virgin holding the sheaves of wheat which is the constellation of Virgo. Which indicates that Jesus was what? A Virgo. Now according to to the new zodiac with the 13 constellations with Orphicus aka Serpentarius added to it you know my sign is now Leo and my moon is in Virgo remember your sun is how the world perceives you and your moon is whom you really are as Carl Gustav Jung would put it your shadow side who you are instinctually when there's nobody around Nobody to put the persona or the mask on. Which is your ascendant. My ascendant is also Virgo. I have five aspects in Virgo. So if my ascendant is Virgo, which is my, the persona, the mask you pr put on to perform in front of society. And my shadow is also Virgo. Which is your natural instincts when nobody's around. Means that I am not fake. I am that I am. What I am on the inside is what I show y'all on the outside. For good or bad. In any event, again, the house of bread. Again, when Jesus divided the two fish and the five loaves of bread in front of the multitude, the two fish represent the Pisces, the two fish. That is the, from out of the age of Pisces. And the five bread is five aspects of the Virgo, which I have. Let me go further. Let me go back to Isaiah and break it down. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Like a zodiac sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now the word Emmanuel consists of three separated words. M, Manu, and L. Manu, obviously, is short for hand, as in manuscript. L is a singular form in the shorter form of Elohim, 
which are the deities that created us, gave us our intelligence from the Cro-Magnon and infused their DNA to create the beings that we are today, the human, excuse me, not the human, the Homo sapien. And Ema and M M in Emmanuel is a prefix meaning in or upon. So we have M Manuel. So Manu was just a hand, as in manuscript, or manipulate to handle with skill. And the L Ohim, it's in or upon the manu, the hand of the Elohim. And that is his name. That's his esoteric name, his secret name, his arcane name, the hidden name. In any event, yes, Bethlehem is again it literally means the house of bread why is Virgo the house of bread you ask because again the virgin the maiden holds clasped in her hand sheaves of wheat and that is the active ingredient in bread bread again symbolizes your body I repeat these things so you can absorb it in your cerebrum cortex so you can put it to practical use. I use this, I use repetition in order to assist y'all in understanding, to grasp on. Kind of like, you know, the hooks on songs to get you to, to grasp on as they hypnotize you in their melodic influence. Or a commercial that keeps coming on every five minutes to program you to buy or purchase their product. But in my case, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Now, as anyone knows about the astrological sign Zodiac or the horoscopus, the hour watch, scope means to watch, and horo means hour or time, so the time watch, the horoscope, or the zodiac, like zo, as in zoology, the study of animals, you know, because in the constellation you have animals such as Taurus, Leo, Cancer, so forth and so on, but in any event, anyone who studies astrology knows that Virgos, are the sign of perfection. Everything has to be perfected. You know, again, I have five aspects in my birth chart in Virgo. So I am the epitome of perfection, meaning that in order for me to feel comfortable and communicate and dialogue and divulging this information with y'all, I had to cut out a few things. First, for over 10 years, I quit indulging in tobacco products. Seven months, I stopped indulging in marijuana and alcohol. I don't know if you noticed in my, in my more recent videos, I no longer have a blunt and a drink. I'm freestyling this. That is no longer a part of my repertoire. And... I don't eat meat at all. And I've been doing that for six months. No chicken or turkey or hamburger, like Karis One so eloquently puts it in his song. Because to me, that's suicide self murder. Anyway, yeah, so I don't indulge in those things no more. And I also practice semen retention, meaning I don't partake in the orgasm, because that is sin. Whether you want to hear it or not, whether you like it or not. That is sin to indulge in the orgasm. To procreate is a sin. This is not our original place, this material realm. This plane net. 
whatever you want to call it, Earth, this physical reality, is not our original home, our original dimension from which we came. We are here because of sin, because of the orgasm, because our parents' parents and parents' 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 parents decided to indulge in the material room for sexual pleasure, excuse me, pleasure and immediate gratification. The reason why we're born in sin is because when you have coitus, it's not for, you know, the the for procreation or it wasn't planned. It's just for sexual gratification only. That's it. For selfishness, for selfish purposes only, for feeling. Excuse me. That was forbidden in the Garden of Eden. Now, I'm not telling y'all not to partake in the sexual intercourse. That is permitted. It's called tantric sex. But to cross the line and have the orgasm, why do you think you go through convulsions? Your body, the bread, goes through a cataclysmic eruption and of uh, uh, literally convulsions. You're having a seizure. You could pour syrup on shit, but it doesn't make it pancakes. That is a seizure. And that is the prime directive of wanting to have intercourse. And then you have a child. The sins of the father. And we wonder why our children pretty much disappoint us in certain aspects. They were born in sin. But you don't have to take my word for it. Google it. There's many videos on YouTube that you can watch talking about this. It was for, Sex was forbidden. In any event, yes. Germany, they call it Vril. Maintaining the, your power. Just as the orgasm can produce a physical body, withholding from the orgasm can manifest a power that anyone, excuse me, not anyone, that no one could ever imagine, especially living in this thing called sin. You, you manifest by withholding the orgasm. Again, just like the orgasm can manifest a human body. When withheld, when getting to the peak and refraining from the threshold is the power. Why do you think in Star Wars, Anakin fell from grace? By indulging in Padme, Queen Amidala. With the orgasm comes possession, desire, things of sin. Possession is forbidden. Desires are forbidden. Lust. But I know y'all don't want to hear that because y'all want to continue to do that act. Y'all want to make up excuses to participate in that. But go on right ahead. And y'all going to keep incarnating here over and over and over and over again. Y'all can do what y'all must, but I ain't coming back here. My soul is going to be free. I'm telling you the secret how to get the hell out of here. You must understand, we all have been lied to. Why do you think that they bombard us with sexual image so much? All over the place, all over the TV. To infiltrate thy brains. To calcify our penile glands. So we can't function 
and the power that whom we really are. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. 1 Corinthians 3.16 This physical body is your temple and you're in it. Like being in your home. But your soul, your spirit is immortal. Energy cannot be destroyed. It's only transferred from one place to another. So in this physical body, the bread dies. Where do you think your energy goes? That's all spirit is. It's energy. Soul. S-O-L. The Latin term for sun. This is all etymology. You have to refrain from the indulge, from the things that the body indulges in or desires. That is dopamine from your drugs. That is alcohol. Strong drink. This is the vow of the Nazarite. You have to give it up. Indulging in meat. All meat. Not just the ones with cloven hooves. All of it. I am a full-fledged vegetarian. Why not beef? You must understand the larger animals have emotions. When they die, they are in fear and in pain. And you are what you eat. So when you consume that meat, that meat becomes a part of you. That fear, that pain becomes a part of you. That animal, that animal becomes a part of you. And you're more than an animal. You are half God and half flesh. Animal consists of two words. Anima, which is spirit, and Elohim. I don't have to break down Elohim no more for y'all. Y'all uh, heard it from previous videos. Anima. The anima is the inherent spirit which is in men, the male faculty of the consciousness. Because outwardly, we are masculine. So you reflect the feminine and it's vice versa for a female, the animus. Outwardly, she's feminine and soft. Inwardly, her conscious is going to project masculinity. The opposites, the Adam and Eve of our consciousness and our unconsciousness. The house of bread, Bethlehem. Holding the sheaves of wheat. Again, your sun sign Sun, soul, which is a Latin term for sun, is how people perceive you. Your moon sign is whom you are it's instinctually. So people perceive me as a Leo. And what are the characteristics of Leo? Bright, arrogant, lazy, courageous, above anything petty, royal, regal. But your moon sign, your shadow side, is whom you really, really are. Instinctually, what you do when you're under pressure, what you do when things happen unexpectedly. And my moon sign is Virgo. So I'm going to analyze naturally. I'm going to get lost in introspection. I'm going to perfect. I'm also going to help and be of service. My ascendant, which is my rising sign, is also in Virgo. Your ascendant is the mask you put on to present to society. When you put your clothes on, when you walk out into the world, how you want, how you want the people to perceive you. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how they perceive you, but it's how you 
characterize yourself when you walk out your front door. My, dis my, dis my ascendant is also Virgo, which means that I don't act. I am my moon sign. The max that I put on, my persona that I put on is my moon sign, which is Virgo. There is no faking. I am that I am. Period. And a lot of people don't understand that. But that's not my problem. My job is to inform. To educate. You Masons. Y'all wear the apron around the genitalia area for a reason. It's to shield the phallus, your penis, from indulging in the sexual act and producing the orgasm. But you fools, you hypocrites, Y'all have orgies, sleep with other people's wives, all types of things and sin. And that's what, what the original masonry was about. The original masonry was about character building. Becoming a better individual and perfecting it. Mastering the body, which is the square, to become godlike, the compass, your spirit, to overcome these materialistic things. But y'all want power. That's what y'all desire power and prestige. You foolish mortals indulging in the orgasm. As much as you can. You should be ashamed of yourselves. A real adept desires none of these things. At all. A real mason doesn't even want to part. Doesn't even like this domain. This realm. And he walks upright with the light. The light is the power from refraining from the orgasm. You fools! Your tongue should be cut out. Your heart should be ripped from your chest. Joining because you want to be, you want to be something. Be yourself. Love yourself. For starters, become a better person. You lust after the things of this world. You lust after these women with their boobs hanging out. Their booty showing. Grabbing your genitalia. You wear the apron, don't even know what it stands for. You fools! You reap what you sow. Walking around looking like stooges. Thinking you're better than people because you know a secret. You don't know shit. There's a difference between knowing the truth and knowing the light and walking in the light. And none of you walk in the light. Hypocrites, you Pharisees and Sadducees, you've been doing it for centuries. And it must end. You disgrace this signal right here. You disgrace this sigil. You disgrace it. That's my symbol. Take it down. I 
that's enough of your foolishness. It's an abomination what y'all have done with this planet. You think you're special, huh? Lusting and desiring. Indulging. Seeking validation. Because you're a little boy. A weak mother's boy. A May son. A mother's son. You can't find yourself. So you join. Because you want to be a part of something. Because you're afraid to stand alone. Because you're weak and pathetic. I conclude this broadcast day. 